if you manifest things, perhaps maybe write down things that you want to achieve in life, not just in business, but in life as well, you could then see those things start slowly happening in front of your eyes without even realizing, because what you're doing is, one, you're manifesting, and two, you're looking at those things every day. A switch point moment is a moment in time that fundamentally changes your life because of a connection you made with another human being. My name is Sean P. Neal, and this is The Switch Point Project. And welcome, Switch Pointers. Thanks so much for joining me. As you know, we have always got some really interesting guests on here. And this guy that I'm about to introduce you to first caught my attention in the 413. It's a club on Clubhouse. It's a room, actually, that I'm involved in. And he is there in that space, and he caught my attention. Raj Singh is a producer and a promoter with over 10 years' experience in the music and media industry. And he created an award-winning public relations and marketing agency called Exclusive PR. And they represent this fresh, innovative, and effective approach to public relations. And as you heard, he and I share some synergy in the music space and in being involved in production. And I, I don't know if most of you know, but I've had a whole past life as an audio engineer for concerts and corporate events. And so he and I had a lot to talk about. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So before we talk to Raj, let's have a word from our sponsors and then we'll be right back for a great conversation. Raj, I am so excited you're here. Thanks for joining us. Sean, thank you so much, my friend. Uh, firstly, I want to say I'm really honored to be on the show. I'm really honored that you reached out to me. And I'll be honored and I'll be very happy to help as many people as I can today as well with some gems and some, um, some, some great tips. Let's fire it away. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, and the, you know, as we were just talking prior to hitting the record button, I think, you know, one of the things that I have learned from you over the short time of our interaction uh, has it's taught me so much about how to uh, reach out into the social media world with the things I'm doing. Um, because quite frankly, that's one of the areas that, uh, that I'm working on uh, and growing in. And so you have been very proactive about uh, reaching out and saying, you know, hey, do you have a graphic for this? Are you ready for that? And so I, I think there's just a wealth of experience uh, that you bring to the table. Um, but let's let's talk a little background first, because you and I share some some music, uh, I guess, commonalities there, but in some different areas. But you're a musician. You, I think you've got some other things. Tell us just a, a little bit about who Raj is uh, on a day to day basis. Who would I who would I meet, and where did you come from? Okay, so basically, just I'll, I'll be as quick as I can because my background is so vast, right? It just sometimes gets a bit difficult to, to actually condense it. Um, so, my mom and dad are from two different countries. Uh, my mom's from Africa. My dad's from India. Uh, they migrated here in the nineteen seventy five. I think it was. So they both came here around that time, three months later, they were married, and then I was born in 76. Um, so I'm born in the Midlands, uh, I'm a UK born Asian, I've got two sisters, uh, one lives in Dubai now, and I've got one that lives here in the UK. And myself, I've got many things that I do in the background, so I've got my fingers in a lot of pies, so to speak. Um, I'm the director of a, a award-winning agency, I'm also a owner and a director of a record label, and I'm also a music producer myself, I'm a um, DJ, and I play something known as the Dutol, which is a Punjabi uh, drum. And you play that with like a bamboo stick, and it's a wooden stick, and one side is plastic, one side is uh, leather. And uh, you wear it around you, and you play it at functions, weddings, gigs, and shows and stuff. So that's me just in a, a quick synopsis and a quick nutshell about me, but yeah, that's uh, who sure. Rodson is. <laughs> Well, how, how long have you been uh, involved in music? Is that has that been a lifelong thing? Yeah, I mean, I think I've always I've always been um, interested in music. I mean, like when I was a child, I would listen to cassettes, um, and um, I, and I think that was down to my father because my father is very um, Indian, but he's got his great Western values, you see. And 
Um, he would put on music in the house and I would naturally just grab onto it and my passion grew from there. And I think my first cassette was when I was about, probably about 10, 11 maybe, right? Um, I might get my age a little bit wrong there, but <laughs> it's around about 10, 11, I think, when I had my first cassette. And it was a, it was a Punjabi Bangra band here in the UK. And, and from there, it was just like a passion for music was just built in me. And it was just built in my, in my family as well because we got a lot of family members who love music just generally it doesn't have to be specifically Punjabi but just overall genres we love it so it's a yeah it's a it's a family thing as I like to say that's so cool because I, I remember you know probably about five years old um on my grandmother's porch and I had this uh she <laughs> let me tape cotton balls to my face so yeah. I had the beard <laughs> And I had this little nylon string guitar and I was putting a concert on for the neighbors. And so I remember like you be, you know, just music becoming a part of who I am at such a young, young age. Of course. Yeah. Uh, so how, how do you feel as you, you know, as you went through life and as you matured, how did music shape and influence you as a, as a human being? I think what it was, um, I found that music just generally makes people happy. Right. And I've got a tattoo on my on my left arm which says where words fail, music speaks. So I think music is about emotion, it's about connection, and it's about um, how you feel. Your mood changes from one track to another. So me, ultimately, it was a case of like, I would go to parties, I would go to weddings, and I would see these drummers drumming away, uh, how they energised the audience and how they got people to get up and start dancing on the dance floor. And that's how my transition went from be becoming a fan of listening to music and actually uh, watching, like uh, going to shows and going to family weddings, transitioning me into then becoming a drummer myself. And I started off playing the Punjabi drums at the, at the tender age of like 23, I think it was 22, 23. So that's wow. how I transitioned into it. it. It became a passion, then it became, okay, I want to actually do this. I want to, it was a hobby at first. Um, and... I contacted a local school and then I started learning within six months. I was out in the field and I was playing at shows, I was doing gigs, I was doing weddings, I was doing parties, you know, so that's how that transition happened from there. You know, it's interesting as I can look at my life, there's <laughs> so many similarities we have. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it is interesting as you start to, and with music specifically, um, because I think music is so well-rounded and we, we use so much of ourselves, whether it's producing, whether it's playing, performing, uh, there's so, so many different areas that we pull from. Um, when you look at some of the things that you have done professionally, uh, that weren't related to music, do you find that you're still pulling on the things that you've learned through music to do those? Yeah, I think like, even like in the, like for example, um, it's not music related. So if you look at when I'm basically doing um, um, business on the corporate side, my creative side still comes out. So, um, uh, like, my social media, especially my content that I'm creating on Instagram, it's all from a platform known as Canva. So my creative side comes out. So all the content that me and my team create, it's the creative side which I give direction on because... Um, and the reason why I say that is because when you're playing the Punjabi drums, there's some kind of coordination. You've got to be creative when you're playing the beat so I do find myself uh, getting pulled in that creative side quite a bit and I like to be hands-on sometimes my team have to say to me Raj go away <laughs> you know like, <laughs> I just can't help myself sometimes you know I just I'm a bit of a perfectionist like that. it's like go away leave us alone we know what we're doing right and sometimes it's just like my creative side just comes out and I have to look at every little nick and cranny and I have to make sure that it's perfect and so when it goes out because it actually represents your brand so it has to be good not when it goes out Right, right. And when you're specifically when you're in that creative space, yeah. I found that it's always helpful to to have people around you who are those uh, we call them concretes, the the people who understand, you know, that while you may have this great creative idea, it may not really fit into the big picture and they're the ones that come and say, "Sean, Sean." <laughs> yeah. great, great idea, Sean. No thanks, not today. <laughs> uh, I I love the, I love the fact that you bring that to, you know, to this conversation. And what I think is really interesting and caught my attention when I was uh, going over your profile in Clubhouse was that you have taken 
what you do in the music world and you began tr- to trans- transition it into the business world, which, um, can, you know, for a lot of people that can seem like two completely different areas, but there are a lot of similarities. When did you find that that started to happen for you? When did you start to dabble in other areas outside of music? That happened in uh, 2014, if I'm honest. Um, because what happened was um, there was a, a period in my life where things weren't going too great. I was in my nine to five job, you know, and um, um, I lost my job due to the recession in 2008. And then I was in a pretty bad space for a while. And then in 2013, 14 is when I decided that I needed a bit of a break. So I went away to Dubai for, for a few days with my family. We had a family wedding, had a great time, refreshed, recharged, came back. And I had a kind of a conversation with one of my really good friends who's part of my team now. He's actually my business coach. And um, we had a conversation and we were like, Do you know what? There's a lot of people out there that need help. Um, there's a, a gap in the market. And I was like, okay. And he was like, why don't you try and help businesses? I goes, on what side? And he goes, help them with a solution to a problem. Because a lot of businesses, if you look at it, right, they start a business, but they don't know what direction to go. They don't have a plan. They don't have a direction. And they don't know where to start. So what we do as a business, right, is that we help them with that direction. And the idea was, right, to do the same thing that we do for artists, but on the corporate side. Now, what I mean by that is that if you look at artists, right, they need visibility to have any kind of sales uh, and the fans to get them noticed and promoters to actually book them for any shows and get them any press exposure, right? Businesses are no different because if you look at a business, a business needs visibility. So the visibility comes by doing social media marketing, by getting them in the press, by getting them on radio, TV, and so forth. You know, and then there's other strategies that come alongside that, which just helps them gain Google presence. And that's what we do for businesses. And that was actually realized later on in 2014 because the idea was initially to help artists, but then it evolved because I saw my family and friends were struggling with their businesses and they were like, do you know anyone that does marketing? Actually, yeah, I do it. So I can help you. You know, so then I started giving free guidance, free advice. And I realized that that's the market I could tap into because a lot of people were struggling in that space and they didn't know how to market. Yeah. And so... Talk me uh, through this 2014 when you're you're facing some of these challenges uh, and and probably on a soul searching journey yeah. as many of us go through. Yeah. Um, one of the first things that you said was you took some time away. Yeah. And I I don't know that people necessarily always do that for themselves. What were some of the the strategies, the things that you did during that time of way to really reground yourself and find your path, your, where you wanted to go? I think it was um, finding a direction first for my own business. Now, I have this ethos is I don't want to work in my business, I want to work on my business. And I think what I find is that a lot of business owners actually work in their business, which then they lose vision of where the business should be. So my, if you look at my, my role in my company, it's as a director, and that's what directors do. They actually direct the company in a way that where the vision they have. So when I was away... I was like, okay, I'll, the one vision I want to do is I want to automate my business, right, to make money. I want to be able to have an award to be recognized for my business, and that's going to take time, but it will come. I want to be able to then have people reach out to me rather than me reaching out to people. So I needed to have an automated system in place. And that all needed to happen um, over the years. Because when you're starting up a business, you're going to have teething problems, and you're going to learn from your mistakes that you make, and some of the things you do are going to work, some are not. So I think it was a learning curve. And I think also sometimes it's good to just throw yourself in a deep end and see what works and see what sticks as well. Because sometimes certain things can stick and certain things don't. And the things that don't stick, you go back to the drawing board and you say, okay, let's try something new and see what works. So for me, like when I was away, I, I didn't think too much about it because the idea was to have some kind of reflection on the year before and then look at how things could have been better. And I just threw myself in the deep end by... Um, starting my own agency in 2014. Now, that could have gone totally the other way and it could have flopped and I could have, and I, and I could have completely gone bust or I could have carried on um, uh, in the way that I was and I probably would have still been out of work now, maybe. Right. So the idea right. was to come back and just basically go for it. Right. I, I personally had nothing to lose. So the idea was to believe in, in myself and believe in my vision and in believe in the idea that I had and thankfully it actually worked out in a positive way. And my business now is growing from strength to strength year in, year out. 
Yeah, and there are two things that I feel are really important. I'm going to try and attack them both uh, kind of simultaneously here. But the first is um, the visioning side of this, because when you were talking about that, you were just talking about um, how you were creating all of these, what I would call five-year goals. You know, you, you, you want the award, you know, it's a ways off, but you put the target out there and said, that's what I'm going for. Yeah. Um, what, what do you think is the key difference when somebody can't get outside of the box that they're feeling like they're trapped in? Like, what is the key difference from getting from there to stepping out to where you were and saying, I see beyond the box. I see beyond this moment. How can, how can somebody do that? I think what it is, it's about, I, I think I've talked about this subject quite a bit on Clubhouse. And I think it's about, there's two things here. One is mindset, right? And one is don't procrastinate, just do it. Because what happens is we do get stuck in this box. And what happens is not everyone's the same because they say five fingers are not the same on your hand. Everyone's different and everyone thinks differently. But I think everyone's mindset can be changed from negative to positive or from, oh, I can't do this rather than I can do this. And I think that's the difference. I think if you can change your mindset from like saying, oh, I can't do that, you're straight away putting yourself on the back foot and that's a negative energy you're sending out to the universe. I believe in positive energy brings positive outcomes. So if you also do something known as um, a manifest, if you manifest things, perhaps maybe write down things that you want to achieve in life, not just in business, but in life as well, you could then see those things start slowly happening in front of your eyes without even realizing because what you're doing is one you're manifesting and two you're looking at those things every day and believe it or not i did something similar i wrote 10 things i wanted to achieve a few years ago and I, and i actually achieved those things there were only two things that were left on that list one was to um basically buy another property which i'm on the verge of doing now and the other thing was um to Believe it or not, pass my driving test. I don't drive at the moment, right? <laughs> that is where I'm procrastinating. So I need to basically get my mindset correct and do that this year. You know, so those are the two things that I've basically wanted to achieve off my off my list of ten. Now, out of the ten I achieved, but there are two still left. Now, one of them is a house which I'm going to be getting very closely probably this year or next year, and I know it's going to happen because I'm very close. And then the second one is my car, which I'll do, and then. I want to set other goals for this year, which I've got already, which we could talk about a little bit later on, perhaps. Yeah, absolutely. And I, it's just impressive to me because there, there's a, a level of self-awareness that, that we have to take. And I think facing ourselves in the mirror, when you said procrastinating, I mean, you, you have to humble yourself and, you know, put the ego aside to say, <laughs> I am procrastinating. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so I appreciate that. Sure. I mean, I'm completely honest, right? Yeah. The thing is, I think the more honest you could be with yourself, Right, and the more you can help yourself, I think the more you will be in a better position because then your mindset's different straight away because you've accepted that you're what you're doing is wrong and you're procrastinating. And acceptance is a, is a first step towards then manifesting and then getting your mindset correct to say, I'm just going to go for it, you know. And I think mindset is key because the, the more positive you are, the more likelihood you are going to have better things coming your way because what you're saying to the universe is that I believe in you and I, and I want this and I know that you're going to give it to me in, in, in due course in due time now this interview that's happening today um, I didn't expect it you know sometimes things happen unexpectedly and that good energy I've been putting out there all those for all those times I think it's coming back in reward now because this is my eighth interview that I've done today and I, 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 and I thank you for that you know yeah and, and the universe it, it's funny because the universe works in that way where I, I, you know, two months ago, uh, I was putting the podcast together and I thought, I know the quality of people that I want to bring on here. And I know the purpose I want, same thing as you visioning this podcast out. And then it just seemed to happen naturally that those people were entering into my life. And it's, it's just amazing. You said something about being thrown into the deep end and I I am an absolute fan of throwing myself in and seeing how fast and far I can swim. <laughs> uh, tell me is, what, when you think about this transition that you did 2014, um, what were, or what was one of the biggest moments where you felt that you had really taken a risk that was beyond yourself? It was scary. You were throwing yourself all in and you had no idea where the outcome was going to be. What, what was something like that? Okay, so starting a business can be a risk in itself anyway. And I think that because um, you need capital, 
to start off with. So you need capital to have all the startup costs, right? So that was one thing that I thought, oh my God. Secondly was I had no clients. I didn't have no clients, no ready clients. So what I did was I set up an agency, but I had no clients to um, basically say that, okay, d like come and buy my services. I didn't have clients that were ready to buy my services, if that makes sense. Perhaps in hindsight now, what I should have done was maybe have the clients there ready and say, hey, I've got an agency, how about you buy my services? Because then you've got clients that are ready to buy from you rather than you have to go set your brand up, get brand awareness and then go out and, get, and, and actually go out and get the clients. You see, so for me, right, I was going head in first, full throttle, and for the first year it was very difficult because I was up against some of the biggest PR companies. Some of my competitors were in the Asian, in the Asian market and one of the actual agencies had one in the world as well. So when I looked at that, that's what set my burning desire to actually just keep going. It was one. Two, I want to win an award. And three was, I will do whatever it takes because I had to put money in and I had to work long hours. You know, the long hours was the, was the actual killer. But I think the money side of it as well, because I think you've got to have the financial backing or the financial funding to actually do the certain things. I mean, there are certain things I've done that didn't work. Like I brought some apps, I brought some um, some things like software, you know, to like make my business stand out a little bit differently from my competitors. Certain things worked, certain things didn't. You know, so for me, it was about the investment side of it. I think where I was like, well, I don't know where this is going to be because maybe in a year's time, I could be in debt and I might need to shut my company down. But it didn't turn out that way, right. thankfully. So... I know someone who uh, recently embarked on their consulting journey to be a consultant yeah. and uh, spent a significant, significant amount of time and uh, resources into their first client. Um, and of course, like anyone, uh, you know, they faced a lot of challenges and that relationship with that client did not end up working out. Oh, uh, so the, you, I guess what I'm getting at is, you know, we come to these spaces, whether it's in business, whether it's in life of extreme disappointment, extreme, um, you know, it feels like we hit a brick wall and maybe, maybe this isn't the path I should have went down. This is wrong. Can you speak to people who might have been experiencing that recently where they've, they've hit that wall and, the, and now they're doubting themselves and, um, and just seeing beyond that wall a little bit? I have. Yeah. I mean, I think what it is, um, I think we all get difficult customers, if, if, if I'm honest, right? Um, I was, um, last year, I was nurturing a client for six months and this client didn't follow through because he wanted to just focus on one platform and what my idea was, he was very similar. He was a, he was a business coach and he wanted to do personal development for clients and plus he wanted to do corporate development for people that are in the workspace that are burnt out and they wanted to have a better way of how they can... Um, manage the workload so to speak so the idea was that he wanted to just focus on LinkedIn whereas I said to him your brand presence isn't going to work if you're just on one platform so sometimes you do get clients like that you get some clients who can sign up and uh, the greatest clients they just let you get on with the work sometimes you get clients that are difficult and you're going to basically find that they are very difficult to a point where they where you just don't want to work with them but sometimes what you got to do is just one is put your foot down because obviously they've paid you for a service and you've got to just be a bit polite about it and say, look, you've paid us. Let us get on with doing what we're doing because we're the professionals here. You approached us for a service. And secondly is um, if clients are, let's say, um, wasting your time and they're not following through as a client, what I do is I'll just move on to the next one because they're not the right client for you. And sometimes having a system in place helps. Now, my I've got a funnel in place, right? So I've had loads of people on Clubhouse say, Raj, how can we work with you? How can we connect? I'll just send them to a link in my Instagram bio and it's the first option where it says book a free 30 minute consultation with me. Now, when you click on that, you get a form that pops up. It's a Google form that I've created. And on the Google form, it gives me data about who they are, what their business is, where they're struggling. And the ultimate question is, what's the budget? Now, if they, if they click on the zero budget, I know that they're not the ideal client for me because you can't work for free, for one. Because right. my social media platforms are already providing value. So if you're providing value to someone and if they appreciate that value, they will perceive you as an expert and then they will purchase your services to help them, right? Whereas if you don't perceive yourself as an expert, then that becomes a little bit difficult. And I think the way we do our business is it's value, 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 and you will very rarely find any sales posts on our socials, and then you do 5% sale. 
that's the way we do it. Wow. 2020 was a life-changing year for everyone across the globe. Uh, what changes did you experience as a person, as a business in 2020 that, um, that affected you and, and how did you get through that? Um, there was a couple of things. I think firstly was the businesses were struggling. Um, they needed our help. But the problem was that they didn't have a budget. They, hadn't, they had zero budget. So that was a bit of a bit of an issue for us because, um, of course, like me and my team couldn't work for free uh, because we were providing value already on our social media platforms. Because if you look at our content, they're very detailed uh, marketing tips and stuff on social media. So, um, so we were providing that already. And what we said to a lot of our clients was, look, we could do the basics for you. We can help you set up this, like social media accounts, but we won't be able to go the full throttle and help you in depth. So a lot of a lot of people did come to us for that. But that's where they hit a brick wall because they didn't have a budget. What then happened was they kind of stagnated. Um, so that was one issue. I think the second was that we didn't necessarily have that much of a problem because we're a online based business anyway. We don't have an office um, because all of my team, they all work from home. They all have their own, um, their own IT equipment and we're a home based business, but we're a business that we can work from anywhere in the world. So all I need is a laptop and just one or two other tools in that. So I can work anywhere. Um, so I think the, the main thing was about businesses having a budget for to do the marketing for them. I think that was the main issue during the first lockdown, I suppose, and even last year to a point. Sure, yeah. It, so, and, and I, I think it's, it's interesting because what you're talking about, the way your business was already functioning, you were uh, one step ahead of the curve and, and being yeah. a home-based business with everything. What does, as we get into 2022, there's, you know, this feeling, I think, uh, and I hope it's globally, because I know it definitely is in my household that 2020 year, 2022 is going to be the year that hopefully we'll see past COVID. We'll, we'll start to, to really be able to breathe a little bit, uh, literally and figuratively. Um, what does 2022 and beyond look like for you and exclusive PR? So, um, this year we have a lot of plans, um, Last year was building up to 2022, um, and I've been networking with a lot of amazing people. So this year, I've got some fantastic projects. Um, there is a, a mental health project that I'm involved in. I'm a mental health advocate, and I'm really passionate about mental health because I think in the last two years, mental health has been such a big problem, in, especially people in lockdown, oh, yeah. not being able to get out and socialize, you know, and their health deteriorating. So I'm a massive advocate for that. And the company I'm involved with now, they're, going, they're launching an app this year and they are doing one and two other things, which I can't just say right now, but they are going to be ahead of the game in that industry. So that's one project coming our way. Um, I've got a, a couple of music clients who I'm talking to right now. Um, funny enough, I think it was yesterday, I was uh, talking to a client from the United States who wants to promote his son here in the UK. So that is one client that I'm looking at. There's a, two clients here in the UK that I want to promote as well. Um, and myself as a business, um, we have got a free Pinterest guide coming out very soon. And the Pinterest guide is going to help businesses realize that why they need to be on Pinterest 2022. Because Pinterest is one of the third largest search engine after Google and YouTube. And they have introduced and announced some new features that are gonna absolutely explode this year. Um, so we're launching a guide just to give some insight into why they should be on there. And then um, one other thing that we've got, one or two other things, is that we've got a YouTube Shorts course coming uh, this year. So we've got our own product finally. So we've got a course that's been built to help businesses utilize YouTube and Google um, uh, for their business so that they can go out there and leverage it against their competitors and make money through short form videos. So that's a, a, a product that's coming out. Um, and then also my record label, I've got a label as well called Audio Replay, so I'll be launching hopefully um, that and I'll be launching my clients through that and I'm getting involved in the NFT space on that side. Wow, exciting. <laughs> You've got so much yeah. going on. Um, I, I want people, and now this, it's funny to, to talk to a, a PR and social media expert to say, how do people find you? <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but I would love for people to be able to, to you know, connect with you at all levels. What's the best way? What do you recommend? Um, I would say you could get hold of me on my Instagram. That's um, Exclusive PR UK. Uh, my Facebook page, which is um, Exclusive PR. You can also contact me on LinkedIn. I've got a LinkedIn page on there, uh, which is Raj Singh, Exclusive PR. And also my um, my email. So you can email me at info at exclusivepr.com. 
and um, all my socials have my number in there anyway, so you can connect with me through there, right there. Uh, Raj, thank you for, for joining me, taking time out of your day today. Really appreciate having you, sir. No problem. Thank you again. And I would like to say to all of your listeners, I hope they found value in this um, in this um, um, short interview. And um, it's been amazing, amazing speaking to you. And if anybody needs any help or tips or anything, just do hit me up and I'll see what I can do for you. Awesome. Thank you. Raj Singh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Take care. The Switchpoint Project is part of the Switchpoint Media Network. Switchpoint Media creates raw and revealing conversations that explore the intersection of self and social awareness, growth, and authentic human connection. For more great podcasts and videocasts, be sure to join us at switchpoint.media.